Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today we're using the new August 2022 release from Pinkfresh. I am going to be using the Happy Dance Stamps, Dies, and Stencils, the Leafy Background Stencil, and then the Fancy Circle Die. Um, this card looks a little different than I had envisioned it. Looks a little different than most of my cards. Um, <laughs> so sometimes it just works out like that. So first things first, I'm going to get the stamping out of the way. I am using the uh, Pink Fresh Studios um, hybrid, uh, I think it's just black, I think it's just hybrid black, um, to do some stamping because I am going to be doing some Copa coloring in addition to my stenciling. Um, so I'm going to stamp that down and then we'll switch over to the stenciling. I'm going to start first with the background, with this leafy background which I think is just really kind of fun and whimsical. Um, puts a couple of different kinds of leaves. I chose to do mine in all green today, um, but with fall just on the horizon, I don't even want to think about it. I don't even want to think about it. But since it is coming, like this would be a really pretty one to do like multiple um, colors with. Uh, but I'm going to be using um, the ink cubes. This particular set is called Garden Stroll, and it's a bunch of different greens. I'm not going to be doing any um, ink la like layering. Usually with my ink blending, I'm layering colors on colors on colors. Um, but this time I didn't. I just let them be true to what they were. I started with the second one up, which was actually Meadow, and then used Emerald City and Evergreen. I didn't use the lightest color until later in the card when I had to change my game plan because, you know, that's just sometimes how it works out. So I'm going to be doing this ink blending and then I will be doing the ink blending for the Happy Dance um, florals as well. So um, this is part of a um, blog hop. I just should mention that uh, if you're watching it, today is August 15th and it is the day of the release. Um, but there is a blog hop I think you can enter through the 18th, um, which would be Thursday. Um, and they're giving away 10 $25 gift cards um, throughout comments along the hop, as well as the whole release on their um, YouTube channel, I think. So, um, lots going on. Lots, lots of chances to win. I will link that below on YouTube if you'd like to hop along with us. Um, so how did this card end up being what this card was? I originally thought, um, that it wouldn't look as busy as it did. And for some people, some people do busy really well. I do not. I don't. Um, I struggle with it. And so, um, like the, the more elements I added, the busier it got. And I really just kind of wanted to bring it back to being a little bit more, um, I guess it, layered is fine. I'm fine with layered, but I want my focal point to shine. And sometimes when I'm adding other elements, I find it very hard to find a balance, um, and so I'll show you kind of the the couple of different ways that I could have gone with it and then the way ultimately that I did go with it. So as far as um, life goes, uh, it's just been, it's been a little crazy busy. Um, you guys know that with the kids being sick and everything. So today was the first day that Miss Caitlin was off her medicine. Let's just talk about this. Did you see that leafy background? It's so pretty. It's so pretty on its own. And I can see myself using this again in the future um, without trying to kind of dim its light so that it was more in the background. Um, but anyway, so today was the first day that Caitlin was off her medicine. She is back up to eight ounce bottles and this morning seemed to go well. Now, last week we did the same thing where she was off her medicine um, and the whole day went well, but then that next morning she got sick. So here's hoping for tomorrow morning that she's still solid and we have maybe passed by the stomach bug. Something to note with this particular stenciling, um, you saw me probably uh, do all of the pink, um, but I wanted these taller flowers to be like a blue violet, and I don't have a blue violet ink. So I put down the pink. I think the one that I started with was the bubblegum. 
no, sparkling rose. I'm telling stories to you. <laughs> I mean, I am literally telling stories to you, but I meant that I was lying. Um, <laughs> I started with sparkling rose and then I went over the top of that with um, summer shower. And that is how I got the blue violet color. You can see my little uh, piece of leftover masking tape that I'm just using to make sure that my colors don't get anywhere that I don't want them to be. Um, so yesterday they had the annual, um, they call it the Battle of the Badges. It was police versus fire for the softball game. Um, so Eric played in that, uh, and I packed up the kids and you know, if you're a parent, um, packing up your children <laughs> by yourself while trying to get yourself ready is like a feat. You know what I'm saying? You want to talk about, you know, these different um, <laughs> obstacle courses that you can sign up for, like Tough Mudder? No. Get yourself and your children ready in a timely fashion with all the pieces, parts that they need. That is an obstacle course, my friends. Um, and actually, they were pretty good. Um, so I got up. I did what I could to like pack all the bags. Eric had already previously loaded up the um, like the camping chairs because they have um, bleachers like stadium seating, but it's not nearly enough for all the people who attend. Um, so he packed up the chairs and the stroller for me, which was awesome. That was one less thing on my list to accomplish. And then I really just had to get their items packed, them fed, dressed and out the door as well as myself. Um, I was mostly successful. I did end up having to apply a little bit of makeup at red lights. <laughs> um, and my hair was in a ponytail. I didn't really do anything with it. It was clean. Does that count? Um, <laughs> sometimes that's an accomplishment in and of itself. So we went and we watched, um, them play. Eric's parents also came, um, and my sister. So, um, we got to hang out with them. And then of course, you know, I worked there, for 15 years. So I know all these people and it was really nice to get to see them and catch up with them, especially since, you know, now working from home, I'm catching up with my no one, with no one pretty much, uh, unless I leave the house to go dispatch. Um, so oh, we're to the coloring. So let's talk about that real quick. So here I wanted to talk about how you can use your stencils as a guide for your Copic coloring. This image is beautiful on its own, but if you wanted it to look more like you colored it yourself, you can use the um, like the predetermined shaded areas to really help you decide where to put them. And so I found like an in-between color and I went over it with that. That is one way you can do it. So for these blue flowers, for me, that was a B24. And I just kind of flicked some color out from the shadow that you could do that and just leave it. I wanted it to look a little bit more like I colored it. So I'm using the stencil color um, as my highlight like that light blue is my highlight. And then I'm going in and going right over the shaded areas that the stencil has provided me with my darker color. And then I'll blend them back out with the mid-tone. And this is going to give the look as if I have colored the entire flower, you know, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest, all that jazz, without me actually having to do so. Um, and for me, like I know when I look at an object, for the most part, where I'm going to put the shadows. But for somebody who doesn't know, um, this can be really helpful as kind of a trick to get you more comfortable because the more that you do it, the more that you color and see where those shadows lay, the more it will become instinctive for you. Um, and so this is, I really just think it's a great tool. First of all, if you're trying to make a quick card, like knock it out, um, the, the shading on the stencil is already beautiful. But if you're looking to maybe practice your coloring without getting so frustrated um, that you don't know where goes, you know, what goes where, or there isn't an example out there of somebody coloring it that you can follow. Um, 
this is something that you could use with your layering stencils to see, okay, where is the illustrator putting this shading? And you can tell because it has the multiple layers. And so wherever your darkest color is going to go, you can just kind of blend those out a little bit um, to make them more your own, to make it more unique, and then also practice that skill for yourself. Um, I've told you guys in past videos, my go-to is kind of like a pink orange, um, a pink orange yellow. And so today with the color palette, I did try to switch it up so that it wouldn't be the same thing I always make. <laughs> um, and so I really do like the way that the flowers look. Um, you know, the color combination that I'm, I'm working with here, they're analogous, so they're next to each other on the color wheel, and that works really well together. If you find, like I did with this little um, pink side view flower, I found that um, I lost a lot of the shading when I went back over it to blend it. Um, don't fret. You can always go back in with your darker marker and just add, you know, a little touch here and there to make sure that your shadows are seen. And that's what I did with my, my pink flowers. I just went back in with my darker one and laid that over there. For the taller, um, smaller flowers, I'm really not going to do a lot. There's, um, the stencil adds shading just around, like, the center of the flowers, and that's pretty accurate as to where the shading would go. Um, I'm just going to deepen it up a little bit and then add a, um, second, like, a second and third color so that they're just a little bit more dynamic to look at. Um, I really like this image, this happy dance image. I think it's really pretty and it's large enough to kind of fill up a whole card. You could even just do this and not even die cut it out and just do some like green grasses in the background. It would be really pretty. Um, or you could do the die and then put it on a colored background would be beautiful. Um, so yeah, very interested to see the several different ways that this gets used along the hop. For, um, the blue violets three colors maybe was a little bit too much in the marker department um there wasn't much left of my true stenciling by the time i was done so if i had to do it again i'd probably bump it back to just two markers i am going to add just a little bit of shading to the centers um again right where the shading was put down with the stencil i didn't add anything else to the greenery i just did the florals um, and then i'm going to die cut this out i'm also at the same time going to die cut out the fancy circles i originally thought that i was because i stamped it in black i was going to go with a black um, mirror cardstock to cut this out of, uh, but I didn't like it. I didn't like it. So now here, let's talk about what I don't like. So this is my original game plan here, this piece, but it seemed too busy. I liked the two pieces on a plain background better. Um, and so here's some things that I did to make it more my own. I also liked the flowers on the leafy background without the circle. Um, I could have done either or. I really wanted to try to make the card that I had envisioned. And so a couple of things that I did. So I knew that I was going to go around the edges with the green. So in order to make this leafy background kind of pop and add in another gold element so that this large circle frame wasn't the only thing gold on my card, I just picked one of the stencils, uh, not all of them, just one stencil, put it back in place, and just took my Versamark ink pad and kind of swiped it over. This is going to give me an imperfect impression, which is fine. That's the look I'm going for. And then I'm going to sprinkle on some gold embossing powder. This is going to add just a couple of gold accents around the leaves, make them a little bit more interesting um, to look at because I know that at the end of it, and you're going to see that I'm going to dumb down the leaves a little bit just so that they're not super in your face. Um, I am just cleaning up anywhere that I don't want that gold embossing powder. And then I'm going to heat set this until it is um, smooth and shiny. The gold is always so pretty and I'm going to use the same gold for my uh, sentiment. So um, yeah, then from there, what are we going to do? 
Well, we're going to start kind of building. So I glued down the bottom portion of the flowers flat, but I wanted the top portion to be a little bit raised. So I'm only adding foam adhesive from like the blue flower up. Um, and then I will glue the rest of it flat so that it hides behind the circle. The circle will also be glued flat. Um, so anywho, so we went to the baseball game. It was nice to see everybody that I haven't seen in ages. Um, a lot of people that I worked with for a really long time. And then also, obviously, for the kids to see their grandparents and their aunt. Um, after the game was over, the police did win. It was, um, they were, it was bad. I think it was like 32-16 or something. They really, really won. But the super nice thing about it is one of the firemen, his daughter actually is battling cancer and she's older, which means that she does not have, she can no longer be on her parents' uh, health insurance. And so her health insurance is not great. Our health care in, in the United States is a huge problem anyway. But um, so the money was that they raised for this game actually went to that fireman's daughter to help with her medical expenses, um, which is amazing and wonderful. And he was very thankful and kind of overcome with emotion. Like at one point, Eric was like, you know, he's out there trying to pitch and he's just like crying on the pitcher's mound. Um, but it's wonderful to be able to, you know, support your own. And, um, then afterward, the mayor, which was very generous of her, put on like a luncheon, like a cookout slash luncheon um, for the players and their immediate families. So we did go to that. Caitlin did really, really good um, ex right up until the end of the game. Like she was past nap time. She was getting hungry. Um, so she took a quick little car nap on the drive from the baseball field back to where the luncheon was. And then we fed her and then she was a much happier girl. She did fall asleep on the way home. And then that's when she got her really good nap, um, which was actually really nice because then everybody got like a 20 minute nap. Uh, because she was napping. So I think Nathan's the only one who stayed up and he was watching YouTube or something. But Eric and I were definitely, definitely couch napping. Um, so here, this is all put together now. I am going to pop up my sentiment on um, foam and just put that down at the base. I think it's a super cute little sentiment. It says, you make me happy dance. Um, there's a lot of good sentiments in this one, but I really liked this one. I just thought it was kind of fun and uh, playful. So I'm going to put that down at the bottom and then it still seemed too busy. And this is where I'm going to try to do some other things to make my focal point shine. First thing that I tried to do, which did not work, by the way, um, or not, it didn't work enough, was I tried to add a shadow behind it um, to make it kind of pop forward a little bit more. Um, it just, it just didn't work. I mean, the, I mean, the cast shadow is there and it's in the correct place, but it didn't do enough to bring the image forward. There was still too much going on in the background. So then I asked myself, if there's too much going on in the background, what can I do to the background to make the focal point kind of the star of the show? And so I did a couple of things um, with like the white gel pen. I added in some details. I added my shimmer um, gel pen only on the uh, focal point. And then ultimately, I mean, I, I was like, okay, I'm done with it. I'm going to walk away and be done with it. Um, but ultimately what I ended up doing was going back in, even though it was already adhered, <laughs> because sometimes I just can't let it go, which my husband will tell you is 100% facts. Um, sometimes I just can't let it go. And I was still not really loving the way that it looked. And so I decided that I was going to go back in with two of the lighter green colors and just go around the edges to make the focal point like the whitest part which would draw your eye to the center and then um it would kind of push the leaves into the background and while it did make the car a little more overall green than I wanted it 
it definitely let the focal point, these flowers, kind of move up to be the star of it, which was ultimately my goal. So this is a little bit different than my, my regular style. I will be very interested to hear what you guys think about this. Um, the whole release is amazing. It's linked below if you would like to check that out. They are affiliate links. I appreciate your support of my channel and my family. Um, and then of course, I hope that you head over to the blog hop for, to enter for your, you know, chance to win. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.